This video is going to show you how to create this coil-like object using a 3D sketch on Autodesk Inventor. The first thing I'm going to do is open up a part. I'm already in inches, so my default units are good. Under the sketch option, if I do the drop down, I have an option of a 2D or a 3D sketch. I'm going to click 3D. I'm then going to use the helical curve tool. This is going to allow me to create the baseline for this sweep. It's essentially the center line of the coil. Now you have to ask yourself, what information do I know and what do I not know? I have to choose um, a set of definitions here that's going to align with the information I have. Now I have the height of it given here. Um, I have some diameter, but uh, I don't have these other ones. I don't have pitch. Uh, I don't have revolutions, but I have pictures that I can simply count the revolutions. So I'm going to choose that. Now for my revolutions here, I'm going to start with this one and say that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half. So I'm going to say my revolutions are 8.5. My height is given as 4.438 inches. And my diameter is 1.875. I don't have a taper, so I'm going to leave that at zero. Now, if you look in the screen behind you, it has essentially populated that helical shape. I do have also some options with rotation. So if my rotation is wrong, I can flip it the other way. The first thing I want to do is anchor this point somewhere. I'm going to use my origin, number one. And number two, I can kind of use one of these uh, origin axes to orient this, uh, the center line of this, essentially the guideline. So I'm going to do it uh, going straight up. And then the last thing is kind of the end point of where do we want the end point? I'm just going to click it because I can go back and change that relatively easily. Now, if I fly around here, I can see my orientation is about 180 degrees off, but it is spinning the right direction, which for me is the most important thing. I can rotate this later. So I'm going to leave my selections as is and click OK. And here is my circle, or my helical curve, I should say, not a circle. Right. If I kind of look at it this way, it actually looks pretty good. Now, it is still not fully constrained, and that's always something I want to do with my pieces. I'm going to use some of the origin information to get this thing set up. If I go to constraints, I'm going to use the collinear to take this centerline guideline, and I'm going to use the y-axis in this case. And that just turned black, so that tells you that is fully constrained now. Um, it looks like the last thing I need to do is, actually it looks like there's two more things I need to do. So number one, I'm going to use some of these planes. I'm going to use the bottom plane, and I'm going to set this endpoint on the bottom plane using the coincident. Now in a 2D sketch that wouldn't really work, but with 3D sketches I can use um, the origin planes to make that happen. So I'm going to select the bottom point, and then I'm going to go to my XZ plane and select that. Okay, and that's good now. Now lastly, this thing probably has some rotation. So I'm going to use essentially the same thing I just did, coincident. Let's see which plane here is going to work. Now let's use that one. And so that basically locked in my spiral helix and my workspace. And now I am ready to finish my 3D sketch. Now for my sweep, I can essentially create the profile, which is just a circular profile. I just have to make sure I do it right on one of the endpoints. So uh, luckily, I put one of the endpoints on one of the origin planes. So I can just take that plane where this guy sits. I can start a 2D sketch. And I'm going to project that point, take a circle, start it right on the same point, put in my diameter, 
of 0.225, and that should be fully constrained, which it is. Now I can sweep it. So with sweeps, the most critical thing is that you have a, por a point projected between your path and your profile. If you don't have that, your sweep is not going to work. So I just selected sweep, it figured out my profile. Now for the curve, I should be able to select my spiral helix and click OK. And there it is, there is my spiral helix. It looks exactly like the example. So I'm good to go on that. Actually always a good idea to um, get a nice isometric view. Oh, I don't like that one, I like this one. Actually, I should be replicating the one I see here. So let's turn one more turn. And that's perfectly how I want to end this right there. So make sure you set that current view as home. Fit to view. And that's perfect. That is how you uh, create the coil with a 3D spiral helix sketch using the sweep tool.